Uh, my name is Darina Dvinsky, and today I would like to talk about uh, known smooth optimization with noisy gradient free Oracle. So my presentation consists of uh, two parts. Firstly, I will start with the introductory part. I will present some background material and present gradient free optimization. And uh, secondly, and lastly, I will present my uh, recent results obtained in this area. So uh, for the first, let's consider the general convex optimization problem. So we would like to minimize a convex function f on a convex set x. And uh, let me make a, a minimal assumption for this function f that is Lipschitz continuity. So we suppose that uh, the gradient or if the function is non-smooth then subgradient, uh, the norm of this subgradient or gradient is bounded by some constant m. And we would like to solve this problem. Uh, so in many practical uh, problem, we cannot solve this problem explicitly. And we can solve it only numerically by some numerical algorithm. And uh, often we consider a black box model and suppose that we cannot, uh, we, can, uh, we cannot, um, we don't know the function, but we can request uh, the value of function at some point, and the oracle gives this uh, value of function to us. And we say that we solve this problem with epsilon precision if some, uh, some algorithm gives us a point x sub epsilon uh, for which the following inequality holds. And we measure the complexity of algorithm in terms of the number of, of Oracle calls so that to obtain this uh, solution, uh, to obtain this epsilon solution. So uh, what is the basic method uh, which we can use to solve this problem? Of course, this is a gradient descent or projected gradient descent, uh, which is introduced here on the slides on the side. And um, what is uh, bad news here? Uh, if, for example, uh, Oracle has access only to noisy version of uh, function f, uh, as presented in this uh, picture. So for example, the original function which we want to minimize is depicted in blue, and the noisy function uh, to which the Oracle has access is depicted in red. And we want to minimize uh, this blue function um, and uh, Oracle gives us the value uh, or gives us the gradient of uh, this red function. Then if we run this gradient uh, descent method, we will stop in some local minimum of this red function. And this local minimum can be too far from the original minimum which we want to obtain. So uh, in this uh, case, we can consider a, grad a gradient-free method. So this is one of the motivation why we consider gradient-free optimization. Another motivation is uh, large-scale problems where calculating of the gradient can be even prohibitive, prohibitively expensive. So uh, we cannot calculate the gradient uh, for some problems, as for example, in a page rank uh, problem. So uh, for all of these cases, we can consider gradient-free optimization. And we can approximate the gradient of function uh, by the following finite difference of the function value in two different points. Uh, and the second moment for this estimate can be bounded by uh, D, where D is the uh, problem size multiplied by M squared where m is the cons Lipschitz constant of function f. Uh, of course, this is uh, not uh, the one way how we can uh, approximate the true gradient of function f. For example, we can do it in the following way. But uh, a bad thing connected with this approximation is that, that now the second moment uh, depends on the square of uh, dimension, of problem dimension. And uh, in the previous approximation, 
we have linearly dependence on problem size. That is why uh, we will use uh, the following approximation instead of uh, this approximation of the gradient. Uh, however, uh, for non-smooth function, uh, this approximation uh, is bad uh, in, uh, in the points uh, where a function is non-smooth. So we, have, we will have bias. We will have bias if we will use uh, this approximation. For example, uh, let, me, uh, uh, let me prove this uh, in, the, in this uh, simple uh, one-dimensional case. For example, uh, let us consider the function of absolute value of uh, x. Uh, then uh, let us calculate uh, the gradient using this uh, approximation, gradient free approximation, in the point x, which is uh, very close to the uh, point zero, where function is non-smooth. And uh, to calculate the approximation of the gradient uh, in the point x, we use the function value in the points uh, x minus tau and x plus tau, where tau is some positive constant. And in this case, we will obtain that this uh, gradient approximation, so this is grad this gradient estimate, will equal to the following term. So this is uh, x divided by two. But uh, the true gradient in this point is equal to uh, in this point or in this point is equal to one or minus one. So here it's equal to uh, one. So you can see that the true gradient, so in this point, in this point uh, X, our function F is differentiable. So we see that the real, the true gradient in this uh, point is far away from our approximation. So this is bad thing connected with the non-smoothness of the function. So uh, what, uh, what I propose to do? I propose to uh, smooth the function and uh, consider a smoothing problem instead of non-smooth one. So let us consider how we can smooth uh, our non-smooth function. Uh, consider the Euclidean unit pole. And uh, we, uh, we uh, take the expectation with respect to this uh, random vector. So uh, over, over, over this unit ball. Uh, so this is like uh, averaging, uh, averaging of uh, all this uh, randomized volume. And uh, then uh, this function, is differentiable and we can calculate its gradient. So actually the gradient uh, will be as follows. So, and you can see uh, that this term is nothing more than the expectation of our estimate G. So this is the estimate uh, of the uh, gradient of function S. And so the main idea is to replace the original function, uh, the original problem, uh, minimization of function f by minimization of this uh, smooth uh, function. So now uh, let me um, prove in one dimensional case for simplicity, how uh, we obtain this uh, bound, uh, not bound, how we obtain this uh, equality. So uh, consider the definition of the smooth function uh, in one dimensional case, uh, this is equal to the following integral from minus one to uh, one. Then we differentiate the function under the uh, integral and obtain the following term. Then uh, with the change of variable, we uh, obtain the following, which is equal to the following term. And uh, as you can see, this can be presented as an expectation of the following term. Uh, so uh, where, where vector uh, E is equal to one or minus one with probability one over two. And so this was the proof how to obtain uh, this bound. Of course, uh, using uh, the fact that uh, the distribution of vector E uh, is symmetric, then uh, we can, uh, we can 
obtain that uh, this term is equal to the following term in one dimensional case. Uh, then I consider a stochastic mirror descent and it's a zeros order version. So it's gradient free version. So for the input of the algorithm, we need uh, to know the iteration number. We need to know uh, a, a, a starting point of the algorithm and the step size. Uh, then we uh, calculate uh, the approximation of the uh, function f uh, and do the following iterative procedure. Uh, then we uh, average all the obtained uh, values. So here, uh, props uh, is uh, so here prox is the prox operator, and in the Euclidean case, uh, it's equal to the projection. Uh, onto the set X, uh, X, X capital. And in the Euclidean case, this stochastic mirror descent is nothing more than a stochastic projected gradient descent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, the, this is a mistake. Uh, this is equality, so uh, not, not an equality. So this must be equality. And now uh, let's let me consider the rate of convergence for this uh, grade, uh, for this uh, mirror descent method. So what we have, uh, we know that the expectation of our estimate is equal to the gradient of smooth version of F. So this is equality. Uh, then we know that the second moment of our estimate can be bounded by the following term. Then. Uh, if we choose step size as follows, uh, where n is the number of iteration and r is the distance to, uh, to the solution of initial problem, then we have the following rate of convergence for the smooth problem. So, but uh, we need to obtain, uh, we need to solve the initial problem, of course, and using uh, the following inequality, we obtain the rate of convergence for uh, initial problem for non-smooth problem. Uh, so now uh, I consider a bit the uh, difficult task when even the function uh, function uh, even function is unavailable. So Oracle has only access to a noisy approximation of this function f. So uh, Oracle can only give us uh, a value of a function. C, uh, which is the uh, uh, sum of uh, function f and some noise. And we suppose that uh, this noise is bounded by some uh, capital delta. Uh, then we will uh, a bit uh, change our estimate of the gradient. So here we will use not the true function value because we don't know the true function value. Here we will use the uh, its stochastic noisy approximation. Uh, then what we have, of course, now uh, we we will have some bias uh, in these uh, estimates, but uh, we can control this bias uh, by uh, changing the delta, by uh, changing the value, uh, the maximum value of the noise. So the second moment uh, will change uh, here uh, as following. So here we have uh, additional uh, term, which is uh, which depends uh, on the uh, on the maximum value of noise. Then we choose uh, the following step size and uh, obtain the following rate of convergence for a smooth problem. And here we have additional term also due uh, because of the uh, noise. Then we also use the condition, uh, con uh, condition of our uh, approximation of non-smooth problem by a uh, smooth problem and obtain the following rate of convergence for the original problem when uh, the function is corrupted by some uh, maybe adversarial noise. Uh, so what I presented so far, uh, were, were known. And uh, now uh, the next slide presents, uh, presents my recent results. So my uh, improvement to the existing results. 
Uh, sorry and, to interrupt. Mm -hmm. can, can you, on the previous slide, re remind, mm -hmm. uh, no, one more, the model mm -hmm. of the noise, I forgot. Um, model of the noise. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. just uh, additional noise uh, for our function f. Ah, bounded uh, noise, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you remember, for example, the picture with the absolute value of x, uh, not, not the absolute value, the parabola and the uh, noise, its noisy approximation? And now yes. we have uh, the access to uh, not the function, the real function, but to its noisy approximation. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and it's adversarial. So adversary chooses noise, and then your randomness is over. Um, so there, there are expectations over epsilon. Um, uh, okay. no, uh, it's, it's, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, it's not an epsilon. It must be expectation over this uh, over this uh, vector e. Sorry, it's not an epsilon. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And your algorithm. Uh, sorry. And this is equality. It should it should be inequality, right? Uh, here, here, yeah, inequality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, your algorithm, this mirror descent, it's deterministic or probabilistic? No, no, I forgot no, no, already. Uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's the high because here uh, we have stochastic approximation. Stochastic due to uh, we introduce this vector E, yeah, which yeah. is random, which is random. Okay. That is why we take expectation here. Yeah, yeah. and so the noise is adversarial and the randomness, yeah, the choice of E uh, can be anything. Uh, the choice of E is independent of, uh, um, of, of the noise delta. That's right. Hello? Uh, e uh, is some uh, vector from the Euclidean unit sphere. Yeah, yeah, okay. And and uh, it's independent oh, of the... delta. Hello? Oh, there is yeah. problem with connection. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, connection is slow, yeah, I see. Maybe, maybe it's my problem, I don't know, <laughs> probably. I also don't uh, know. I just want to verify that um, delta can be anything, and you assume randomness and algorithm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what uh, we only suppose that. Uh, There's the speaker has problem with internet connection. Oh, you're back. Good. Uh, hello. So, so sorry, it's, I think it's my problem with internet. Sorry. One more yeah. time. I will try to share again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, yes. So the only assumption uh, made for this noise is that uh, this noise is bounded by some value delta capital. This is the only assumption for the noise. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in, in, in the existing literature, uh, people consider the uh, second norm of this expectation of the estimate of gradient and the uh, gradient of smooth uh, function. Uh, I, I, I changed. Uh, I did analysis, uh, an analysis of uh, stochastic uh, mirror descent and notice that actually uh, in, that ana in the analysis, we have the following term. And uh, if we will uh, not use the uh, uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here and approximate, it, uh, approximate this uh, term uh, by the norm of, uh, of each term, uh, of each term and use another uh, another theory, we can improve the result. Uh, so uh, in my result, I used uh, the uh, theory of measure concentration, and this uh, allows me to obtain uh, a bit tire bound. So as you can see, uh, if I consider instead of the second norm uh, of this term. Uh, if I consider the, uh, this term, I obtain not the d, but the square root of d. So the results can be improved in the square root of d. Uh, if we consider uh, in the analysis, in the convergence analysis of mirror descent, uh, 
the, the following term and estimate the following term. Uh, and so now, if we want to solve the initial problem with uh, some epsilon precision, uh, then we can uh, we can choose. So we can uh, choose uh, data uh, in such a way that this uh, term will be not uh, larger than epsilon, and uh, to choose tau in such a way that this term also uh, will not larger than epsilon, and of course this term will not larger than epsilon if we uh, choose n uh, in a definite way. So uh, uh, can you remind how is tau, how big is tau at step n? I forgot formula. Sorry, formula for what? For tau up on step n in your algorithm, it was something blah blah divided by square root n. Uh, square root of n. In the algorithm or where? Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. It's gamma that changes. Ah, yeah. So it's it's not it's a diff, it's a diff, different things. So here gamma is a step size, and uh, tau uh, is a point. So it's a shifting shifting from the point in, at which we want to calculate our gradient. So okay. plus tau and minus tau. Uh, and uh, so. So that is uh, so that is how we introduce the tau. So uh, tau we, is fixed in your algorithm. Tau is fixed, yeah. And uh, here I show how we can choose the tau. So we okay. choose the tau uh, from the beginning of algorithm, and then I do not change it at all. And uh, if we choose tau proportionally to epsilon then we will obtain here a good approximation uh, of our initial non-smooth function. Of course, if tau will be uh, very big, we uh, can obtain smooth function, but which will be very, uh, very far from our original function. And we would like to uh, approximate our original function by smooth function as closest as possible. And we can do it if we, uh, if we choose tau proportional to epsilon. Then uh, to solve the initial problem uh, with precision epsilon, uh, we need to uh, set the maximum value of noise, which we allow to, to be here in our model, proportional to uh, tau epsilon and uh, the uh, one of the square root of d. And using the estimate for tau, we obtain that uh, this maximum value of noise should be not more than epsilon square divided by d. So this means that the uh, maximum value of noise will be more than the value not able problem with epsilon precision. So this is the uh, bound for the max value of noise in our and uh, also we can um, obtain the number of iteration so yeah uh, I saw in another message that my internet connection is slow maybe there will be another problem of reconnecting again or something or like this I don't know sorry for this uh, so we can obtain the number of iteration which we need to make in order to obtain this uh, solution and this is num uh, this number of iteration is proportional to d, the problem size, uh, and uh, one over uh, epsilon uh, in the power of two. Uh, so, also uh, what I wanted uh, do I have time? Yeah. Uh, so also what I wanted uh, to say is that uh, remember uh, in the mirror descent we have chosen a Euclidean pro uh, Euclidean setup. But of course, we can choose another setup, for example, uh, entropy setup. And uh, it's known fact that uh, in the entropy setup, uh, the probe's diameter of uh, some set X is almost dimensional independent. So uh, it's equal up to a constant of the square root of uh, logarithm of D. So for example, we choose not Euclidean setup, 
but uh, entropy set up in our algorithm, then we can obtain uh, in the bound for the number of iteration the following term. So here we have logarithm of D instead of, of D. So this is bound, uh, this bound we obtained uh, in the Euclidean setup in our algorithm. And this bound we can obtain uh, in the uh, entropy setup. So the, uh, the, uh, this is a, uh, this is why we use uh, mirror descent and not, for example, uh, in, in another algorithm because mirror descent allows to use the different procs, um, different procs, to minimize the function. And uh, the next slide uh, presents uh, my contribution and presents uh, other related works uh, about uh, about these gradient uh, descent methods. So uh, the optimal bounds. Uh, is depicted uh, here in red. So for example, uh, in the following two papers, uh, Bajandina et al. and Biznosikov et al., uh, they were proposed an optimal algorithm, uh, uh, optimal algorithms, how to uh, solve this uh, problem. So in the first uh, paper, it was proposed how to solve the convex problem. In the second paper, it was proposed how to solve a saddle point problem. But if we know how to solve saddle point problem by a uh, zero order method, we can, of course, solve a uh, convex problem. So the analysis is very similar. And uh, in these two papers, there were proposed uh, two algorithms, which, is, which are optimal in terms of the number of oracle calls, but they are not optimal in terms of the maximum value of noise. Uh, another, another two paper propose. Uh, Optimal algorithm, optimal algorithms in terms of the maximum uh, value of noise, but unfortunately they are not optimal in terms of the number of oracle calls. And also uh, in this paper, uh, Rostetsky et al. It was proved uh, that uh, this bound is also lower bound. And uh, you see that there is a two term uh, in this bound, uh, and in the large scale setup, this second term can be bounded by the first term. That is why I consider only uh, this term and I say that this optimal uh, is this bound is optimal. And you can see that uh, uh, in this recent uh, archive preprint, uh, and uh, here in my talk, uh, I proposed. Um, a method which is optimal in terms of the number of oracle calls. So this is uh, everything about Euclidean setup. Uh, and uh, you see that we obtain the uh, bound for the number of oracle calls, which is proportional to D and proportional of one over epsilon in the power of uh, two. And we also obtain uh, an optimal bound for the maximum value of noise. So our algorithms, uh, our, our algorithm is optimal in terms of the both two criteria. Uh, so uh, that's all what I wanted to say about um, this uh, topic. Uh, maybe you have uh, more questions. Uh, you can ask me. Uh, yes. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I, 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 the lower bound. So there are two criteria, number of oracle calls and maximum noise. And I assume for lower bound, you have trade off, right? If you have very big noise, you need more oracle calls. Is it right? Or um, there is no trade off that means? Uh, so uh, you, you need to uh, uh, to take a look uh, at this at the, follow, uh, the following formula. Uh, so. Uh, you see that if the value of the noise will be very, very big, uh, it's independent how many iteration we will make. We ah, cannot solve it's this problem with that term. Noise, they, yeah, of because course. Because they yeah. are, uh, these terms uh, are uh, additive terms. Or we need to minimize each of these term in order to obtain the results. So, so this is epsilon. So did, did, did you did you catch? <laughs> um, well, I, I understand why uh, this condition is needed. It's because noise is adversarial. So if um, you want to be epsilon away from, with of the minimum value and delta is bigger than epsilon, but since you take norms, then you have square root d. 
uh, appearing. Uh, maybe I misunderstand something because the slide you show is about upper bounds. It's about your mm -hmm. algorithm. I, I, my yes, question yes. was about general lower bounds. Uh, yes, but uh, you see that uh, my upper bound, which I obtain, is coincides with the lower bound uh, presented in the uh, paper Ristetsky et al. and Lee. And it was proved there that this bound is also lower bound. So I obtained yeah, the yeah. process that but this is my only question, upper bound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know in that paper, they prove something. This, what do they prove about the lower bound? So um, do they observe a trade-off? Uh, so so I, I assume statement of lower bound is some complicated statement. But uh, look, uh, so we uh, consider algorithms to solve some non-convex problem. And there is a, a lower bound uh, in this class of functions. So the, there is a lower bound in this class of function to solve a non-smooth uh, problem. It's independent of uh, there is noise, there is some noise, or there isn't noise at all. That is why uh, this, uh, this bound holds. It's uh, independent of uh, uh, because of at all or not. Yeah, no so, assumption uh, on what, the function so, except Lipschitz. Uh, look, 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 look at uh, this uh, form. Look at this formula. Yeah, here we uh, don't uh, we don't have noise at all. So no noise. Uh, we uh, have access. We have direct access to the function value f, and we obtain the following term. And this term. Um, doesn't uh, change doesn't change when we have noise so you see so this is exactly the uh, exactly the same term and it can be explained that we need to obtain an optimal algorithm in the class of uh, non smooth convex functions it's not uh, yes in the non class convex. of non convex non smooth non smooth and convex because we consider here a convex problem where the objective is non-smooth. And we wanted to develop an algorithm which will be uh, optimal for this class of function. Okay. And this noise is like a model that uh, we have, uh, we don't have uh, direct access for our function. It's like a model that we consider um, uh, zeros order, uh, zeros, uh, so, the uh, gradient uh, free uh, gradient free method of course mirror descent we can use for uh, with gradient so where where here this is not the approximation of the gradient but where uh, when this uh, is the true gradient or where when here is the uh, stochastic gradient in, instead of our zeros approximation and we uh, used uh, a zeros version of stochastic mirror descent method. Yeah. Okay. So as I understand, after this, mm -hmm. the work is finished. There is no way uh, to improve algorithm. No, no, there, there, there is, of course, uh, uh, huh. there are a lot of ways how we can improve. For example, we can, um, uh, uh, so it's... for example, we can consider uh, decentralized architecture and we can propose how uh, to perform the algorithm in a distributed manner or some or something else. So there are a lot of, way, uh, a lot of uh, uh, things which uh, we can do uh, after. This, or instead uh, of finding saddle point, you can have min, max, min problem and min, max, min, max problem. Uh, but uh, for example, for min-max problem, uh, we have uh, real problems where we can uh, find this min-max problem. For example, GAN. Uh, in the uh, in the GAN in the GANs, we have a min-max model. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, in games, we also have this uh, min-max structure. And for min-max, <laughs> if we have min-max uh, max min we can um, how to say we can combine uh, these uh, mean variables and max variables and consider like a, a one problem with uh, minimization uh, over uh, over dif different variables and maximization over different variables 
if we can ch if we can change the order of the maximum and the minimum you, I, 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 so I, I, I from computational complexity i studied a little bit and then uh, for I example you say convex concave okay yeah but then you we have to say what we assume about the function for example here for example here x uh, has a dimension d and this x can be a stack of multiple variables a stack of namely a stack yeah, of sure. d variables we can we can rewrite it like mean 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 uh, d times <laughs> mean yeah, over yeah but x1, if you alternate it's not I don't think uh, it's the same problem. If you say men of max of men of max, if we, if we cannot if we cannot change the order, of course it's not. But if yeah, we yeah. can, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm asking all questions. I, I let other people <laughs> say something. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Darina. And uh, if anyone else has uh, questions to Darina, please ask away. May I ask a question, maybe not related to this talk? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if, if, uh, if you obtain this position that you applied for, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I want to show myself first. If you obtain this position, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, what will be the subject of your research? Uh, so, is it uh, a continuation of this uh, or uh, something uh, more uh, an extension of this or what? Uh, of course, I plan to do many things, not only this uh, zeros uh, or the optimization, uh, because, for example, uh, this is uh, this is a very new uh, topic for me. Uh, before uh, I studied only gradient uh, gradient optimization, first order gradient optimization, and uh, a very specific problem of Wasserstein bar center and optimal transport. So uh, I have uh, a, a lot of possible direction in which uh, I can work. So, uh, of course, I okay. see uh, some generalization which I can do in this direction, but of course, I can consider another direction and another problems. Yeah, but my, I, I, about uh, some application, uh, do you have any uh, specific application of, of uh, this in mind when the, uh, this, the, the uh, gradient does not exist or something? Do you have any no, uh, mm -hmm. specific applied problems to? To work on. Uh, there are there, uh, actually there are a lot of problems where we can apply these gradient free uh, techniques. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to this because I have only started work on this uh, gradient free optimization. But for example, um, for example, in the, in the beginning of my talk, I mentioned a page rank problem. Uh, where it's impossible to calculate, uh, to have an access to the gradient of the objective. And uh, we and in that problem, we have only access to the function value. We can access to the function value. So uh, namely, I, to sum up, I can say that uh, it's, uh, it's a large scale problems uh, where the um, data or where the parameters are so complicated and uh, we cannot have uh, the um, direct access to the uh, gradient. Maybe it's not a large scale problems uh, problem. May, may, may I go to the, yeah. Maybe it's not a large scale problem. Maybe uh, even uh, any problem in which we have noise. And noise is a very uh, practical. So because in, uh, in, in a lot of application, we have noisy data, not the true data. And uh, as uh, you can uh, solve in this example, that uh, even for this convex function, which is very, very uh, simple, the gradient descent will stop in some local minimum instead of uh, the, uh, the true minimum. 
and uh, yeah. even for the even for this uh, simple convex problem, we can use uh, this gradient free optimization. So there are there are a lot of Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure. That's enough. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, 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 okay, I'm ashamed to admit, but I don't know very well what is page rank algorithm. Um, but uh, this algorithm, it, it's convex problem. You can rewrite. So uh, yes, it's convex problem. Uh, so there, um, I, it's not it's not the problem which uh, it's not the problem of my research. I just uh, thought about uh, it as an example where uh, this uh, technique can be applied. But uh, this problem uh, is, uh, imagine that you would like to uh, run uh, uh, I, each I remember. Web pages in the internet. Uh, yeah, and you need you to find a, fixed point a of, a fixed point of some yes, yes, things. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so you, your uh, target function is the distance. Uh, so uh, operator times vector minus vector and you take the two norm and then you have convex function okay yeah i, I understand yeah, yeah for example yeah for example you can uh, take yeah the two norm as a loss yeah. but uh yeah okay i understand 